Hey and welcome to my first Q&A and speed paint video. Uh, here I will be painting my first d, &D characters in the order of their creation and also answering a few of your questions too. Um, these are all characters that have at least three sessions worth of playtime. Uh, I'm not gonna count any one shots. So first up is Whistle, my Kinku trash wizard who I used for my first campaign of Lost Mine of Fandelver. Uh, she was a bird mom that only had a few more good years left in her, but before she passed on, she just wanted to see her children fly. Uh, so she cobbled together everything she could find that was uh, even partially resembled magic, although stealing from powerful spellcasters left her with terrible burns along her backside and uh, ended up losing uh, her left hand as well. But even so, she, uh, she pressed on. Um, she had a crude spellbook that was crafted from her plundered bounty, uh, as well as whatever pages she could find and write upon, such as uh, a nobleman's grocery list, uh, the back of a wand poster, or uh, some discarded letters. But shortly after uh, gathering her supplies, she joined an adventuring party and to sort of bring her closer to becoming a grand wizard for her nestlings. But uh, anyway, that leads into my first question. Uh, what inspired your character slash persona slash mascot's design? And is it a beholder? I'm a spectator actually, which uh, is a lesser beholder that sort of typically serves high mages or other beholders. And the reason why I have a spectator is kind of a, it's, it's kind of a funny story. So, a little over a year ago, I made my return to playing D&D after playing a few one-shots in college, and I found a Lost Mind of Fandelor game available to play on Roll20, so I, I instantly tried to apply for it, and I got in, I was thankful. And my knowledge of D&D was kind of limited at the time, but I knew that the sphere with a lot of googly eyes was really, really bad. And I was playing my uh, my Kinku Wizard here and scouting ahead with my familiar when the DM in secret described a very, very similar monster. And so I started to flip out and the party with more savvy players started to flip out when I described it to him. And so <laughs> the DM, exhausted, uh, he was just exhausted after a long combat that we had prior and was just trying to calm us down, which being paranoid, distrusting players uh, just freaked us out more. So eventually we did open the door after a lot of prodding and that... <laughs> And it ended up just being a spectator that was just the um, sweetest, uh, most adorable little bean. Um, I'll probably end up making a video of the entire exchange, but um, <laughs> I have I have a special place in my heart for little Jeremy. <laughs> Bless him. Bless his little round soul. Uh, anyway, uh, as far as the other reason why um, I have a spectator as my uh, sort of mascot persona whatever I, I i feel like they're they're very expressive as as monsters and um it's just the four stalks are just sort of perfect for sort of encapsulating a lot of emotion I, especially when you get to like eight stalks or above and it's like it gets very very messy that's also another reason um also it's uh it's uh it's, it's a lot easier to draw <laughs> And uh, if I was going to be having to draw it um, a lot of times for the sake of uh, any kind of animatic or animation, simplicity is very key. Well, yeah, I think that's like most of the reason, but I will I will tell the full story as far as, you know, the encounter with the spectator that was, yeah. <laughs> Coming soon-ish, yes. This next character is Rachette Abomination, uh, the deformed dragonborn paladin that I used for a Curse of Strahd campaign. Richette was a failed experiment of a particularly ambitious group of dragon cultists that sought to become more akin to their draconic deities. Uh, if any success was uh, wrought from their adventure, it certainly wasn't um, Richette. She was born horribly 
malformed and tossed to the frozen wayside, and she also just wandered the unfriendly earth for years since. She took to the gods because perhaps they wouldn't shudder at her unpleasantness as mortals did. Uh, also, Richette's name uh, comes from what others called her. She heard it so often that she believed it was her name, so Richette Abomination thought it was pretty, but because it had so many syllables, but had no idea that it was um, something that was horrible. <laughs> And probably still doesn't to some degree. <laughs> but uh, anyway, on to some questions. What is your favorite D&D monster mechanically and aesthetically? Mechanically, I love a lot of monsters. Any monster with a roll table that comes with it uh, is, is immediately my favorite. Especially like Beholders. Uh, there's a lot of fiends in Mordenkainen's that come with like madness tables. Anything like that. I, I, like, I love randomness in fights. I know that's bad, but I don't know. I like I like the craziness. You know how my my players know how much I like craziness because I made a creature called the Hand of Chaos, which was just this hand of a chaos god, a trickster god that inflicted wild magic on spellcasters. And good god, <laughs> yeah, basically, uh, I yeah, any any. any more chaos I, that can, can bring to a fight, I love it. But beyond that, I do like environmental monsters. For example, like any any kind of big monster like the players can just climb on or even move within or get inside. Um, examples being like the Hag's Hut from Curse of Strahd. That, that's an amazing fight. Not only does the thing have like tendrils, it has a dragon skull with you know, it has like an interior that the um, players can go inside and be like like rocked around inside. And also they've got a hag, a high level spellcaster that's mad moving about. Oh, just so many good pieces. Just makes for an amazing fight. But yeah, like it's, uh, I love those. But let's see, aesthetically, oof, ah, there's, there's a lot of good ones. Um, I really... I really like how they handled some of the metallic dragons in the monster manual, especially the copper dragon. Oh my god. There's a reason why, like, when you open that cover, that's like the first monster you see. It's gorgeous. Uh, I think I do like a lot of um, the ones from Mordenkainen's. They did a really good job with those monsters. The Elder Tempest, which is like this wind dragon that has you know, a ton of wings that are like morphing into like uh, like feathers and wind. Beautiful. Uh, and the Nightwalker is beautiful anatomically. It just has this presence about it. And uh, Jublex. Oh, Jublex is my favorite. Oh my god. It's so goopy. I'm so biased because I love goopy, but like the transition from color from like dark to green and it's just oh you can just feel how gross it is and i love it it's like beautifully gross she's just like mm, work it honey that goo looks good on her i don't know if it's a she i think it's just a hive mind but that's fine <laughs> um anyway uh moving on M moving on quickly from that <laughs> Let's see, um, I was wondering what made you decide to start making animated videos. Well, oh, I, I just wanted to give it a go, just telling my own stories. Uh, I had had, you know, a few stories from my D&D games that I figured were worth sharing, and I just, just wanted to try it. I had a comic on Reddit that had garnered a lot of interest, and uh, I loved what Puffin and Dingo were doing. So I just took the plunge to tell a full story, and uh, man, yeah, <laughs> that's you know sometimes it, there's not a whole lot of there's not a huge epic backstory behind things. I just you know sometimes you just want to try something, you know, just yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's not more than that. And this third character you might recognize from one that I used for Tomb of Annihilation. Although that's also a question that you, uh, a lot of you asked um, as far as what even is Grey? <laughs> um, well, in short, Grey is a doppelganger 
a uh, doppelganger lore bard. Her race was something we just homebrewed because the changeling hadn't been released yet for 5th edition. So, but that said, there wasn't really much for lore or biology for the doppelganger. So we just filled in the gaps. We added that they are ooze-like essentially uh, just being a subspecies of highly intelligent mimics that require a human template at birth. <laughs> it's quite gross, but it, they're, they're monsters, right? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll include what we used for the homebrew in a few links uh, below if you want to check that out. But anyway, uh, some more some more questions. What would you name your art style? Um, I don't know that's really hard because my art style changes a lot. I don't, I, it doesn't seem like it stays the same very often. Like I, I like to, I mean, my normal kind of painterly art style is very different than what I use for my videos. So don't know, maybe like just name it Changeling because I, I don't, I don't stay, I don't stay in a box. I don't know. <laughs> Failing, maybe failing with grace, because I feel like I just happy mistakes that pile up and eventually are okay, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Who names their art style? Come on. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, going along the same vein of that question, uh, what style of art have you not dared to try yet, but want to? Uh, oh man, uh, probably pixel art. Um, I like to try it but I'm kind of scared of it. I don't know why. <laughs> um, especially pixel animation, because it's just, it's completely, it's a completely different way of thinking about how to render art, uh, really. So it just looks so hard to wrap your head around. I want to try it sometime. I just haven't really yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe soon. We will see. Uh, I don't know. Let's see, next question. I'm highly interested in D&D, but where do I go to join a campaign? Okay, well, essentially, like, the best place to find a, a campaign to join is your local game store. Normally we'll have games running. I check your local area with any kind of, like, meetup apps and things. But if you don't mind playing online, I found my groups with, uh, Roll20's Find a Game feature, um, and I've had a lot of success with that, and I've heard, um, a lot of people have as well. There's also, like, subreddits to find a game online. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's plenty, plenty of options out there. Just kinda, just have to dig for them. Uh, whatever works best for you. Alright, so next question. Um, what is your favorite Pokemon? God, uh, <laughs> there's too many, there's too many now. I can't, I can't just pick, like, one. So, I, I had trouble with this one. So, <laughs> I had to just end up picking one from each generation. And even that was hard, because they're, they're all, they're all beautiful in their own right. But anyway, okay, rapid fire. One from each generation. Okay, Gen 1, Gyarados, Gen 2, Cyndaquil. Gen 3, Trapinch. Gen 4, Gibble. Gen 5, Joltik. Gen 6, uh, Honedge. Gen 7, Rowlet. And most recently, Gen 8, Corviknight. But yes, I like a lot of Pokemon, and probably none of them are, not a lot of them are optimal, but they're adorable, and I don't care. <laughs> so, but anyway, yes. Okay, next question. Uh, why do you like D&D? I mean, uh, it should kind of be obvious. It, uh, there's... What's not to like about it? There's there's storytelling, you get improv, you get to kill and also, more importantly, befriend monsters with friends. I don't know, it, it just, it speaks for itself. <laughs> just, it's, it's a beautiful way to like, scratch that creative itch, but also in a way that's social, which is hard to do. And I, I don't know, it's, it's, it's sort of a magical, Magical experience that you can do with friends, most importantly. Next question. How hard is it to make your own homebrew race? I want to make one, but worried I'm gonna dig myself into a ditch. Um, honestly, it's, uh, it's not hard, but always, like, work with your DM on it. Very important. Typically, races have around, like, three core traits. At least one of them is combat-driven. I would honestly use just one existing race as a base and then try to swap out features of equal value. 
if you're uh, if you're taking a monster from the monster manual and trying to make it a PC, just really water down those traits. Racial traits usually aren't that spectacular, so tread lightly uh, and know that the DM has the final say with whatever you come up with. It's very important to note because it can get a uh, it can get too powerful way too fast. Um, Anyway, that's a uh, maybe I'll make a video on it because uh, it is it is kind of hard to like figure out, but it's fun to do though because homebrew homebrew shouldn't be scary and something that's frowned upon because it can be fun. It just has to be balanced. And last but not least is my Kalistar warlock Silas and his Hanya patron, the Blue Lady. He's a Ghost in the Machine Warlock, which is a Technomancy subclass for modern 5e campaigns. Silas was a <laughs> was an actor for a paranormally themed reality television show that was named Poltergeist, uh, although the season was abruptly cancelled when the rest of the crew had perished on set after mysterious circumstances. But when he awoke from his deep coma, he, uh, he quickly discovered he had a lovely lady that had made a nice home out of his uh, corporeal form. But that brings us to our next question. Um, what is your opinion on a warlock and patron relationship? Uh, can it be a slightly romantic one? And uh, so obviously yes, uh, Silas is... You know, the relationship to his patron is um, is somewhat romantic, although it's more one-sided on the patron side. But I don't know, maybe eventually down the line, might uh, <laughs> might blossom. Probably not. But anyway, yeah, uh, uh, yes. Uh, however, there should always be some push and pull. Uh, even good relationships are full of compromise, and having a bond with some. Uh, extra planar force should uh, amplify this to uncomfortable extremes. So yeah, <laughs> I, it should never be should never be hundred percent happy with your relationship to your patron. There should always be a little bit of a uh, drama, <laughs> at least to me. But that's then again, I like make characters that are really flawed. So <laughs> anyway, uh, next question. Moving on. Is there a dream campaign you've thought about and would love to run. Yes, uh, I'd really like to run a long-term uh, horror Call of Cthulhu campaign, um, but at the moment I'm still kind of um, learning the mechanics. <laughs> um, I also want to finish the one I've got on hiatus, uh, which is about uh, airships within the belly of Dindar the Night Serpent, because, you know, that's a good situation for players to be in. Being swallowed by a giant monster and yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> But yeah, uh, what's your favorite character that you've either played or one that you would want to play soon? Oh god, I can't... I can't pick a favorite character, man. That's like picking a favorite child. <laughs> I can't... <laughs> I don't think I've ever really hated playing a character. Uh, I, I try to make characters that, you know, I enjoy playing. Um, but I don't... Mm, I don't know. I, I like playing them for different reasons. But speaking of favorite child, uh, <laughs> there, there's one I want to play soon that um, that I've been hyped to play for a while now. Uh, it's a wild magic sorcerer. <laughs> I haven't tried one yet, and I really, I really want to try one. <laughs> um, and also, the DM okayed for me to be a divine soul wild magic sorcerer, which essentially means uh, all the traits of a wild sorcerer but access to cleric spells and, oh god, the joys of blowing someone up accidentally by trying to cast Cure Wounds is a possibility. <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 I kind of play, I kind of play too hard into the chaos aspect. Um, sometimes to the joy and sometimes to the disdain of my DMs, but that's, that's just what happens. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, but along that same note, is there a character you want to play but feel too embarrassed to bring to the table? Such as, uh, like a Mary Sue, etc. Okay, I thought 
I thought really hard on this one, and weirdly, I, I can't think of one. All my characters are stupid flawed beyond measure because I like it that way. <laughs> I feel like having, uh, I feel like playing a perfect Mary Sue character would get boring very fast. Um, our crew is, is pretty accepting of everything. We've never made fun of another player's character choice before, and we've had quite the spectrum of characters. <laughs> um, now I've had character pitches turned down before by the DM, um, like I'd point to the monster manual at a creature and the DM would just politely prod me towards something more sensible. <laughs> like, no Jess, you can't play a gray render or <laughs> no Jess, you can't play a gelatinous cube. <laughs> um, <laughs> you gotta pick something else. Um, but yes, uh, it's... <laughs> I've tried, man. I try. I just, I just want to play a puddle who's man. <laughs> Don't judge me. Um. Anyway. Uh. Moving on. What is your favorite type of beholder? Oof. You're expecting me to say spectator, but you'd be wrong. <laughs> I really, I like. I think I really like the art and also the mechanics for the death kiss, um, which is weird because they don't come with a table per se, but they. Uh, it's just, it's adorable. Um, and mechanically. It's very evil to melee classes because its blood is dangerous. It's like horrible, horrible like acid lightning blood. It's just great. It's great for everyone involved. <laughs> but no, really, really, uh, any any beholder is great. Uh, that's that's a really hard thing to ask. <laughs> oh, uh, next question. And I get this one a lot. Um, are you looking for a voice actor? Okay, so uh, not right now. I'm at, I'll make an announcement when I would be interested in hiring uh, any voice talent. Uh, if that's something that I'd like to do in the future, but for now, I I think I'd rather just keep things simple uh, with one voice. I can barely <laughs> I can barely manage that as it is. <laughs> I'm not- I'm not that really savvy as far as being a- that sort of management, uh, audio management yet, so I'm gonna uh, just- just handle one for now, but I'll- I'll let you guys know when that might be a possibility. Uh, but for now, uh, no. Not at the moment. Uh, anyway, next question. Would you consider doing a live campaign with other D&D YouTubers on Roll20? Yes, certainly. I don't know about a live campaign, but I will be posting a few one-shots that I've done very soon, and when I say soon, I mean it's gonna probably be the next video that I post. So I hope you guys like will enjoy it. It's gonna be a different style than you're used to for um, for sort of D&D podcast type material. It's 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 very experimental. It's sort of it's gonna blend together animation and uh, painting plus uh, podcast, and uh, I'm just gonna see how it goes. I don't know. Hopefully, you guys like it. <laughs> we shall see. But that's coming soon. But yeah, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the speed painting. Um, I had fun making them and uh, answering all of your questions, as as uh, interesting as you know as they were, and. Uh, you know, I hope, I hope you have a lovely day and keep being wonderfully monstrous in your own right. And I will see you guys next time.